Hello Tangerinis from Querétaro, Mexico. If you're new here, my name is Maddie. This is Jordan. Together we are Tangerine Travels and we've been living all across the country for over three and a half years. In the past, we've done two videos on why we live in Mexico and not in the US, but in today's video, we're gonna tell you how our feelings have changed over the years. And what remains the same. In one of the past videos on why we live in Mexico and not in the US, I said, I believe there is less focus on body image uh, and looking a certain way in Mexico. People in general are more free to own their body type. And like the way you look? Yeah, the way that you look, people don't care as much about that as they do in the US. Like, I didn't feel like there's as much fat shaming and sort of some things like that. And I got that impression because when you go out to the beach, you notice that people who may maybe aren't beach body ready, don't come for me, I'm just trying to like generalize there. They're still wearing bikinis, they're not trying to cover themselves up, they're just having a good time, enjoying life, and not like paying so much attention to like, oh, what if that person thinks that I look bad or whatever. They're just, they're just out there having a good time. Where I think my opinions have changed on this a lot is that people do very much care about their body image, but in regards to clothes. Generally speaking, in many, especially the bigger cities across Mexico. Yeah, so you, like Guadalajara, yeah. Querétaro, Mexico City, though, like the population centers. Yeah. We really see people caring about how they look, what they're wearing. Uh -huh. um, in general, people like to wear brand name clothes and pretty well manicured and things like that. Yeah, I've noticed like with guys here in Querétaro, there's a lot that are, um, I think it's called metrosexual, so they are straightening their hair and gelling it back and manicuring their eyebrows and their nails and wearing jewelry and like trying to dress really nice just for day-to-day -day life. So I think in that sense, many people do care. I'm not saying this, this is a bad thing, but they care how they're perceived and maybe that's a wealth thing they want to be perceived as doing well off in society or that they're more educated or something. Even still in the, today, you go to the smaller towns, you don't see any of this stuff. Yeah, not in beach towns either, but definitely like the wealthier cities, the bigger cities, like you were saying, mm -hmm. it's the case. Previously, we said one of the reasons why we live in Mexico and not in the US is because of the lower cost of living here. And since that video, prices have gone up a lot in both countries. Mm, thanks a lot, pandemic, <laughs> inflation, <laughs> money printing. <laughs> <laughs> but despite prices going up in both countries, I still think that remains true that it's a much lower cost of living here overall, depending on the city you're living in in Mexico and the city you're living in in the US. It's probably going to be about one third of the cost here, but I think that could range from one quarter of the cost to half of the price. Uh, and you know, you were just talking, we were just talking today about Uber Eats and I, that's a luxury that I totally indulge in way too often when I'm feeling too lazy to go get coffee or like- Almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every day, it's pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad. Um, but we were talking about how it's so cheap, like you can get Uber Eats every day if you wanna be lazy and do that, even though the prices are higher than what you'd be paying in the restaurant and there's fees and you have to leave a tip and all that, it's still cheaper than going out to a restaurant in the US even, or, and then that's not even speaking about Uber Eats in, in the US and that cost, because you were recently back and you tried getting it. <laughs> yeah, I could not believe the fees. In addition to the prices being higher than in the actual restaurant, it was like a $5 delivery fee, a $6 service fee, and then the driver is probably expecting like a $5 tip. So before so, you've, even, you've even paid for food, it's probably more expensive than if both of us got Uber Eats here in Mexico. Including tip including and delivery. Including tip and fees. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, things like that just shock us going back to the US now. So that's for sure still a reason why we live in Mexico and not the US. The cost of living is very, very uh, affordable and we can have these luxuries like Uber Eats. And I, I'd probably be very sad going back to the US realizing that I could never do that again unless I wanted to go broke. <laughs> and speaking about food in the US, at the time when we made those two previous videos, we still hadn't been able to go back again to visit friends and family. And in case you don't know my story, in a nutshell, I was dealing with so many health problems back in the US, one of which was that every single thing I put in my mouth, like broccoli or cantaloupe or like almost everything, um, not even unhealthy stuff, but just literally everything in the, the food pyramid was causing me a reaction of some kind or another. Like, 
um, some type of inflammatory reaction and it was just really bad. So when we came to Mexico, I slowly started to reintroduce foods into my diet and it was a miracle. I was able to eat normal foods again. When I went back to the US though, within about a week or 10 days maybe, I started noticing that all of those symptoms were coming back. So a huge reason why I still live in Mexico is because the food somehow is more natural or it just vibes better with my body, unlike whatever the heck is going on with the preservative infused GMO crap or whatever it is about the food in the US. If you wanna live in Mexico, I think the best thing you can do for yourself is to start learning Spanish today. Our favorite program for this is called Rocket Languages. It's an awesome course and a great value. And if you would like to try it out, you can go to tangerinespanish.com. That's our affiliate link and it will take you right to the website. They have a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it for whatever reason or if it's not for you, which I think it will be, you can get your money back, no questions asked. Again, that's tangerinespanish.com. Previously, I was mentioning that I'm personally a bit of an economics nerd and I don't like where the US economy is headed. It seems like no matter who's in charge, every year the national debt increase and the yearly deficits increase. And with my knowledge of history, when a country has this much debt and the US is the most indebted nation in the history of the world, it doesn't end well. So I think we're serving ourselves well to kind of internationalize ourselves. I don't like where the US economy is headed or the US dollar is headed. I was nervous about inflation. And today, I think this is even more so the case. The government is spending more money than they ever have in the past, running bigger deficits than they ever have. Now you have $30 trillion in official government debt. But if the US government had to report like their income, their balance sheet, as if they were a publicly traded company adhering to generally accepted accounting principles, they would be saying they're $150 trillion in debt, but instead they conveniently take this other $120 trillion and they don't actually call it debt, they just call it unfunded liabilities. Uh, so you have a government that's $150 trillion in debt, and this is according to the Congressional Budget Office, not according to me, their own numbers, and they're trying to pay for that debt with an annual income of negative $4 trillion a year. So um, how they're going to do that, um, good luck. I'm going to be somewhere else. <laughs> If you're liking this video and want to see more about Mexico and our life here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We post a new video every Saturday morning. Before we had said in Mexico, it is far less materialistic, which we view as a good thing. I'm sure most people would view that as a good thing. Whether it's because they don't have the money or not, people are just not buying stuff all the time, un unnecessary stuff. I think that's only about 50% as true as we thought it was at the time. And I'll explain. So in the US, people get so much stuff and they can because you can put it on a credit card you can get a loan so you can buy a brand new car and a house and that newest flat screen tv and all this other technology and like expensive purses and clothes you put it all on the credit card and you're just in debt but you have all those material items that you want here in mexico people are still materialistic uh, and it depends on the city, of course, more or less in some places, like here in Querétaro, I think is a little more materialistic than like a small beach town, but um, people can only be as materialistic as they have money for. So they spend their money on those things that they want the most, uh, but they can't really put stuff on credit cards or get out loans in the same way that you can in the US. Also, we had said uh, that Amazon two-day buying stuff online is not as much of a thing, and that is definitely true but we have fallen back into the habit of getting like, stuff on Amazon more, especially like after getting a house and stuff and like putting down roots here. We're buying stuff online all the time. So like I said, I think it's about 50% is true, um, but there is still materialism here. It's not like people are so pure of uh, heart and not focused on all those things. Like everybody has their vices and that's still one of them for some people here in Mexico. Speaking of Amazon Mexico, the selection here is much smaller than on Amazon.com. So I actually think this is a really great business opportunity. In fact, a friend of a friend here in Querétaro makes over a million dollars a year supplying products on Amazon Mexico. So a lot of people are wondering, hey, how can I make money in Mexico? Well, I think this is one big opportunity 
that you have here because in my estimation Amazon Mexico is about 15 years behind Amazon US give or take uh, and 15 years ago that was a heck of a great opportunity for people to supply products on amazon.com so just food for thought okay I'm ready I'm done playing <laughs> Back to business. <laughs> Another reason why we live in Mexico and not in the United States is because of politics. We mentioned that in the previous video that we just hated being around US politics. It was so polarizing and like ripping friendships apart and like listening to it. I just want to tear my eyeballs out and whatnot. Uh, but that still remains true. In fact, I think that's even more true today than it was a few years ago when we first made that video. And that's not to say that there's no politics happening in Mexico, because there is, and I'm pretty sure we just got through, it was like the governor, governator uh, <laughs> elections. So there was tons of political ads, billboards, a whole thing, like very similar to the US. And in fact, very similar slogans and stuff to what you would hear in the US too. But I think we're more able to tune it out and like ignore that side of Spanish and just specifically not have conversations about that. So it's kind of like a blind spot for us here. Does this frame my face nicely? Is this good for the video clip? <laughs> Um, so along the same lines as politics is something else that we talked about there being in the U.S. a lot of off-limits topics. This is so weird, I can't do it. <laughs> Let me go over here. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that you can't really talk about in the U.S. Like you supposedly have your freedom of speech, but now there are literally topics that, for instance, we cannot talk about on our YouTube channel or it could get shut down. There are certain things that you cannot say anymore like whether you are in support or against the vaccines or saying something like herd immunity or natural immunity or things like that. I'm not making any opinions on that. I'm not saying what I think. I'm just saying those are things, topics that you can't really go into. And I think maybe because of the pandemic or because of the way politics have changed because of fear mongering and controlling the population through fear, there are stuff, like there are these freedoms that people are giving up like not even thinking about it too much because of this fear. And that reminds me of a famous quote, I think it's by Benjamin Franklin, and it goes something like, those who will give up a little bit of freedom for a little bit of security will deserve neither and lose both. And these past videos were pre-COVID, but now just think about what freedoms people have given up in the US and where will that lead? Will it? will it lead somewhere where Benjamin Franklin said it would? That's definitely a reason why I like living in Mexico because I don't feel like the same thing is happening at least to the same extremes. You know, I read the book 1984, like maybe three, four, five years ago, something like that. And I couldn't believe, this is supposed to be a dystopian novel. And at that time, it was like a freaking instruction manual for the government, for the world powers uh, to like create the society they want. It was, it was unbelievable. And I remember one of those things that uh, happened in the book is the government puts out a dictionary every year of the allowable words and every new revision of that dictionary takes out some of the things you're allowed to say and some of the words that are in society. And I, I feel like that's even more so the case now than it was when I read that a few years ago. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention in terms of this society being rooted in fear and the powers of be controlling people is that we were sort of in previous videos talking about like mass shootings becoming more of a prevalent thing in society in the US. And since then, even more crap has gone down, even more stuff continues to happen in that same facet, like the BLM riots and uh, rights and freedoms being taken away because of the pandemic, because of COVID, race wars, like society just seems to be falling apart, which is crazy. And I, I, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to live somewhere where I'm constantly thinking, OK, what's the next thing going to be? What's the next politically incorrect statement or action or whatever hobby that I have or something like that? It just um, not a very desirable position to be in. I will say that here in Mexico, I think it's way more restrictive in terms of COVID now, like still having to wear masks, 
some requirements about how many people can go into the store at a time. You have to get your temperature taken on the way in everywhere, use hand sanitizer, step on a stupid sanitizer mat for your feet, whatever the heck that does. Uh, but I see this as a phase here in Mexico, whereas the things that are happening, the cracks in society in the US, I think that's only gonna get worse, unfortunately. So in the previous videos, we mentioned that one of the biggest reasons why we love living in Mexico is the people of Mexico. This is one of the best things about living here is that we're surrounded by some of the most hardworking people that I've ever experienced in my entire life. They're also loving, helpful, kind, welcoming, hospitable, and just, I mean, we could list off 20 or 30 traits great traits that the vast majority of Mexicans have and that has remained true still to this day and even more so now that we are plugging ourselves here into uh, life in Querétaro trying to make friends and expanding our social circle and, and build people, a life here yeah build a life here people are welcoming us into their friend group and inviting us to parties and events and lunches and all these different types of things even though they hardly know us at all so and that's not to say that you can't do that in the US. It's not like people are so closed off that you can't make friends. But mm -hmm. I just feel like the people here are something truly special. And it's different in a way that I sort of can't describe <laughs> the, the people in Mexico versus in the US. One problem that kind of comes with this though is it seems like we're getting invited to like four parties a week now. <laughs> and Productivity Some... has gone out the window. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My liver is throwing a fit. <laughs> <laughs> because there's also alcohol in all of them so <laughs> um but i love it i love that we're getting like we're becoming part of life here in mexico in a way that we haven't before because when we were traveling from place to place to place for like just a week at a time or maybe a couple months if we were deciding to live there longer <laughs> live um, there. <laughs> but it, it's like you just can't at least like that's not my personality it's not your personality either mm -hmm. to like make a whole bunch of friends uh, i'm not like so so outgoing that i'm going to be chatting people up everywhere we go and sometimes in the past it's felt sort of pointless to meet up with people and try to make friendships when we are in a place for only one week so yeah we may never see that person again and and like a lot of times I'm like, I want to experience this city. I want to eat the food. I want to see the Arthesinias and meeting up with person for like an hour, it kind of drops down on my priority list, but if I'm being honest. But, yeah. I mean, for me, it takes time to develop friendships and like, like you, I'm not super outgoing. I don't have a huge friend group. I have, I've my whole life. I've always had like a smaller group of good friends rather than yeah. a whole bunch of friends. At the time that we made those previous videos, it had only been about a year that we were living and traveling in Mexico, and we were saying that it had been one of the most fulfilling and amazing experiences of our lives, more than we ever thought was possible. And so now it's been three and a half, going on four years later, and that has become even more true than I thought it ever could be in terms of um, just personal fulfillment, growth, understanding of the world and people continuing to learn a new language and experience the culture and just all the amazing things that come with being in a foreign country. And I'm so grateful for that. There have been plenty of good, bad and ugly things that have happened since we've been here, but I would not trade this experience for all the money in the world. So two videos ago, I released a video, a vlog of a day by myself titled, Should I Move Back to the US? And Honestly, there are so many reasons why that is kind of a good idea for me right now after the breakup and with different things that I'm dealing with, but especially after rewatching the two previous videos on why we do live in Mexico and the US and thinking about current reasons why I like living here, I don't think I ever could go back to the US. Mexico is my home, Mexico has my heart, and I do wanna stay here. And I hope to continue living here for a very long time. If you feel like there's things that are missing about why we live in Mexico and not in the United States, that's probably because we mentioned them in those two previous videos. So we'll link the first one on the screen right now so you can continue watching. Please subscribe to our channel to see our upcoming videos and... Gong that bell so you get notified the next time we release a new video and we'll see you on Saturday morning.